Welcome back, everybody. Let's say hello to our friend, Mr. John Baptiste. Hello, John. Hello. Woo, what's happening with you? Congratulations. <laughs> Two Grammy nominations today. Yes, indeed. Oh, I'm so grateful and thankful that the music is connecting with people and adding to people's lives. Well deserved. You and Corey Wong, what's the name of that album? Yes, Meditations. Meditations with Corey Wong, the incredible guitarist, Wolfpack. And then your live and album from the Village Vanguard. Yes, Chronology of a Dream. You were there. That I night was there. We Matter of fact, that. I was just <laughs> listening to the very thought of you, you and Rachel, yes. this weekend. Oh. Amazing. Oh, yes. You've got Thank my you vote. So much. Hey, now let's get it. Come on. <laughs> let's let's swing this one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, stick yeah. around. I'm about to interview Barack Obama. I think you're going to like it. I heard. I heard. <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> John Baptiste, everybody. Later on. Thanks, John. Folks, yesterday I had the honor to sit down with our 44th president, Barack Obama, whose new book, A Promised Land, is out now. Jim? Well, President Obama, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. It is wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to see you. I, it, is good to, it, it is good to be seen. I've been seeing you on television, but it's oh, good yeah. to see you in person. That's nice. And, uh, That's got to help the demo in some. How old are you? <laughs> Are you are you are you, are you, are you, are you I, between I'm 18 not, and 54? I'm not the demographic you're looking for. Sorry, it doesn't it's count. It's too late. I apologize. Uh, it doesn't count. Michelle says, "Hey." Oh, good. Yeah. Good. You know she good. you know she loves you. Well, so. I I really enjoyed spending some time with her over the last 4 years. I know. And, yeah. and and she 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 adores you. She thinks the world of you. I think you're okay. Can we just just take a moment? Can I just I don't, and I want to talk. I just yes. I just want to take a moment to 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 drink you in for just a moment, because <laughs> I'm having to get used to looking at a president <laughs> again. You yeah. know, I've gotten out of, I've gotten uh, you, out of the habit. You got, got I got to warm up for Joe Biden. I don't want to pull anything when I see him take the oath of office. <laughs> you got to ease me into this a little bit. Joe's going to be great. And, and I have no Kamala doubt. is going to be great. I have and, no doubt. Um, you know, they're, they're going to have big challenges ahead. But, um, uh, you know, we, we've got the potential of uh, returning to uh, a, a presidency that is actually paying attention and, and trying to you know, do right by all people and not just some. A lot of announcements of cabinet yes. positions over the last two days. People I know. Well, guys you know, it's a whole lot of return to the sort of uh, the stability and what's that word? Competency. <laughs> of your eight years, which is novel. It's as good as a vacation right now as somebody who actually wants to do the job it's, that they're hired to do. That's an interesting idea, isn't it? And, and have experience and have read yeah. about stuff and yeah. know where countries are. It's great. So, how you been? How you been the last four I, years? I haven't seen a lot of you. No. And it's been kind of, I don't know if you've been paying attention, it's been kind of crazy out here. <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're all a little tired. This is how I want to sit today. <laughs> this is my actual, this is America's posture. We're a little bit like a bone fish right now. It's one of the reasons why it's nice to see you. So, um, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I am good. Uh, yeah. but, but I think that I, I am typical of uh, a lot of, of us who are lucky enough that mm -hmm. our jobs haven't been endangered because mm -hmm. I was already out of a job um, right. uh, as a consequence of COVID. Um, Do you know, have any prospects? Do anything uh, coming down the line? <laughs> I haven't uh, had anybody in our uh, immediate family to get sick. Mm, that's lucky. Um, you know, we, we don't have to worry about the bills. And, uh, you know, so, so on the one hand, we've had our girls at home. That has been a complete joy. For us, I don't know about them. And then, you know, the, the uh, uh, I, I think I've used this phrase before, the uh, shambolic nature of uh, the government response obvi obviously has uh, been frustrating. Um, Especially after you left a game plan yes. for this very specific thing and talked about it before yes. you left. Yes. What that, was that, that like to watch this that, response? That, that's, that's the frustration. Th this would have been hard for anyone. I mean, you see even people like Angela Merkel, who, you know, is herself a scientist, mm -hmm. exemplary, uh, you know, but you've still seen some spikes in Germany. Um, but let's take Canada, where the death rate is 
39% ours per capita, right? That, that, that's a measure of if we had done the work that uh, was not rocket science, right? We're not talking about inventing vaccines. I'm glad to see the vaccines now coming on board. But preliminarily, communicating effectively, uh, respecting the science, not undermining uh, the leading epidemiologist in the country mm -hmm. and saying he, he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being consistent in terms of masks and social distancing, not suggesting that um, you know this is some uh, act of oppression, but rather just a common sense thing to prevent people from getting sick. Uh, you know, had we just taken those steps, um, there is no doubt that we would have saved some lives, and ironically, the economy would be better because we would not uh, be swinging back and forth in the ways that we have, and people would feel more confidence uh, about um, uh, making uh, you know day-to-day -day decisions about shopping or you know. Uh, besides the out. besides the obvious uh, nature of it, is the responsible thing to do. Yes, um, and it is the. Uh, economically vital thing to do. Right. Are you surprised that they did not see the political advantage it of would looking have been like good you politics cared? as well. And, and, and yes, and, and, and I think that that is a measure of um, how detached from reality and how embedded um, ideological and conspiratorial thinking has become, where uh, you're doing it even when it's to your disadvantage, right? Uh, you know, uh, in, in your original show, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there was a you, you're, you're satirizing a certain attitude, mm -hmm. but you never thought that folks would actually start believing. I did not know I was a prophet. <laughs> yes. I thought I was a comedian. You thought you were a comedian, mm -hmm. and, but now you're you couldn't make up some of the stuff that you're seeing and. It is to the detriment of the country, but as you said, it's also to the, it, it runs contrary to what would have been smart politics if uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the Republicans wanted to uh, maintain the White House. And that, in some ways, is more troubling because now it's no longer even strategic. It is, um, you're drinking your own Kool-Aid uh, in a way mm -hmm. that uh, I, I think is, is, uh, is, is troublesome. And, and uh, one of the big challenges that Joe Biden's going to have is to figure out how to puncture that you know, information bubble that a, a, not just Republican officials, but a sizable portion of voters are in right now. That gets you to a question that's buried deep in these pages right here, but it could be the only question I ask you. If I only had one question yes. to ask you right now, it would be, what happens now? <laughs> <laughs> what, what the hell happens now yeah. when you have a, mm, half or 70% of the Republicans, so maybe about 40% of right. the public right. think that Joe Biden won by cheating? Yeah. And they, they believe that all these fantasies being promulgated right. about right. Democratic cabals that seem to be pulling the strings in states, Democrat or Republican, right. all over the United States. How do you then speak to those people, even if you're someone like Joe Biden, who's capable, believes in uh, a government doing the job to serve the people right. and is empathetic to the needs and concerns of the people who don't fork for him? Because right. part of, and we'll get to you eventually, but part <laughs> of what I think is extraordinary about what we're about to go through is that you know that Joe Biden actually does care about the people who didn't vote for him yeah. and why they didn't and what they think. Yeah, How he, does he reach those people? Well, I, look, I, I think he's in a good position to, to make the effort. Uh, the fact that he won is indicative of uh, the message he sent uh, of wanting to unify the country. I, I do think people are exhausted by just this you know, uh, you know, World Wrestling Federation constant cage match. And people just want to feel as if a day passes without uh, it being dominated by something crazy coming out of uh, the White House. That, that 
photo opportunity after y'all had yeah. had your conversation in the Oval Office. And I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I've talked about the president a lot for four years, and I've, I've had my fill. <laughs> But uh, that was a chilling moment for me to watch because I perceived in that moment the dignity of the office or rather the trappings of dignity and um, status that falls upon, rightly, falls yeah. upon the person who holds that office in that moment. And I saw the way, uh, or rather I had a flash, an emotional flash of all the ways that could be abused over the next four right. years. Were you having a similar feeling in that moment? Or? Yeah. Okay. yeah, it was a concern. And were those concerns borne out over the next four years? Exceeded. Thank you. Mr. President, we have to take a quick break, but stick around, everybody. We'll be right back with President Barack Obama. At last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over. 